Hi everyone, welcome to this particular video that's looking at proteins for AS biology as part of the biological molecules unit. As you should already know, proteins are made up of monomers of amino acids. If you need to revise monomers again, please click on the link at the top of the screen now and it will take you to that video. So in all living organisms, there are 20 commonly occurring amino acids and these can be linked in many different ways by bonds to form a huge variety of proteins. The first thing that you need to know and be comfortable with is drawing the amino acid molecule. The diagram on the screen shows you the structure of it. Remember that this is an organic molecule, so it's made up of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. The easiest way to remember the structure is to remember that there is a central carbon atom which has a bond with an amine group and a bond with the carboxyl group on the other side. The other two bonds with this carbon are with the hydrogen atom and something called the R group, which is a variant in amino acids. This basically means that amino acids have the same overall structure and it's only the makeup of the R group that changes from one amino acid to another. The property of the R group determines how well it will interact with other amino acids and ultimately determines how the amino acid chain folds up into a functional protein. For example, hydrophobic R groups of soluble proteins are folded into the protein's interior while hydrophilic groups are arranged on the outside. We'll talk about protein folding in just a second. I should probably add that for this particular diagram, the R group is the CH3 that you can see at the bottom. So that's the R group variant for that particular diagram there. Once we know how to draw one amino acid, you should also learn how to draw the condensation reaction between two amino acids and show how a dipeptide is produced. This diagram here shows two amino acids that will join together to form a dipeptide with the release of a water molecule. Much like we did when we drew two alpha glucose molecules, we can identify the functional groups where the condensation reaction will take place. On this diagram, the red box shows the two hydrogens and the oxygen, which will form the one molecule of water during this condensation reaction. The peptide bond will form between the carbon of one amino acid and the nitrogen of the second amino acid. Don't forget that this reaction is reversible by hydrolysis. If you wish to pause the video now to copy out this diagram, then please do so before moving on to the next part. If we had several amino acids that joined up with peptide bonds, we would start to see the formation of something known as a polypeptide. Poly meaning several and peptide referring to the bonds. The diagram here shows the beginnings of a polypeptide chain. Within the yellow circle are the highlighted R groups of each of those amino acids. I've used different shapes to show different R groups and therefore different amino acids. And the peptide bonds between each amino acid has also been highlighted in purple in this drawing. As the polypeptide chain grows in the number of amino acids, we say that it's forming a primary protein or the primary structure of the protein. By definition, the primary structure of the protein is its sequence of amino acids. Hundreds of amino acids will link together to form a primary structure. I often refer to this as being a bit like making a beaded chain. Each bead represents an amino acid and as you add more beads to your chain, you are building a polypeptide. From the primary structure, we go on to the secondary structure. This is where there are many more amino acids and you start to get a formation of the alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet. Please note that proteins eventually get into a 3D shape and the coils and folds that form in the secondary structure are maintained by hydrogen bonding between neighbouring CO and NH groups. Of course we know that individually hydrogen bonds are weak but collectively they have much strength. This diagram shows you the shapes of the polypeptide at this stage and showing you the helical structure in the form of the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. The next progression is going to be the tertiary structure. This is where we start to get more of a 3D structure that's formed and maintained by further bonding taking place. Firstly, you have ionic bonds that form between charged amino acids, and then you have more hydrogen bonds forming between polar amino acids. And finally, you have disulfide bridges occurring between the amino acid called cysteine, which has a sulfur in its R group variant. 
The protein structure forms when the secondary structure folds up and more distant parts of the polypeptide chain are able to interact. This is demonstrated in the image on the left where it shows the end of the chain folding and coming close to the middle of the chain. Without the fold, these two areas would not usually be in close proximity to each other. I bring back this GIF again in terms of the beaded chain. If your beaded chain at this point had hundreds or thousands of amino acids, you would get a bend in the chain that's shown in this particular animation, and that would contribute to the protein structure. I hope that also makes a bit more sense as we progress through. The last part that you need to know about is the protein quaternary structure. Some complex proteins are only functional when they occur as a group of polypeptide chains. So by definition, a quaternary structure protein is when you've got two or more polypeptide chains that are joined together. This diagram shows hemoglobin as an example. It is a quaternary structure made up of two alpha chains and two beta chains, each of which enclose a heme group. The structure of this protein and other quaternary structures is maintained by the same sorts of interactions as those involved in the tertiary structure. So I thought I'd finish off with some examples of quaternary structure proteins, although I will be creating another video looking at these in a bit more detail. The first example is collagen, which plays a structural role in cells. Collagen is made up of three polypeptide chains. The second example is insulin. I haven't included a diagram of it on this particular video, but you should know that insulin is made up of two polypeptide chains. And the final example here is hemoglobin. We saw it on the previous slide just a few seconds ago, so you should have already noted that it's made up of four polypeptide chains, two alpha and two beta. And the yellow rings that you can see inside with those blue pentagons highlight the heme group that's attached to each of those chains. So I've banged on for ages now. I hope that was super useful and brief enough to give you a summary without being too complex. The next video I do will be focused on comparing globular and fibrous proteins. Please join me for that very soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you soon. Bye for now.